a reduced ejection fraction scares people fast. It sounds like the heart is losing power. It's not. CEF is actually a signal. It tells the heart it's working in a stress environment, not a failing one. So when EF drops, the first place we look is the mitochondria inside the heart muscle. So if mitochondrial energy is low, the heart cannot generate full force. And the muscle is not weak. It is underfueled. Low nitric oxide keeps vessel tight. Tight vessels increase resistance. The heart works harder every beat. Low mitochondrial redox means slower ATP production. Less ATP means weaker contractions. Mineral instability disrupt calcium movement and calcium triggers every heartbeat. So if calcium is off, force is off. Inflammation thickens the vessel lining. Thicker lining reduces oxygen delivery. So the heart tires faster. There are not permanent states. They change when the environment changes. So to improve EF, we restore that environment. We raise nitric oxide so vessels relax. We support the mitochondria with better oxygen delivery and better fuel. We stabilize minerals, especially magnesium and potassium, for clean electrical rhythm. We lower inflammation so myocardium can repair. We calm the nervous system so the heart is not contracting under constant stress. Your heart is not failing, it's adapting. When nitric oxide improves, when minerals stabilize, when inflammation comes down, and when the mitochondria have the fuel they need, the heart responds fast. So key supplements, optional, I always say, for nitric oxide, you have pomegranate and you have a nitrate. For mitochondria, coenzyme Q10, acetyl alcarnitine and taurine. For electrical stability, magnesium glycinate and potassium. For inflammation, omega-3 and neurokinase. For vascular repair, vitamin K2, MK7, and vitamin D3. These do not force the heart. They support the biology that improves EF. When the environment improves, your EF rises. Your output improves, and your heart becomes stronger than you expect.